In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get text to fit to a particular shape in Click and Cut and ACS Studio. Um, first of all, this project was sent to me by Lisa, and she's working on a recipe swap, and this is a recipe for Lemon Angel Roll. And uh, you'll see, I'm going to scroll down here, I'm going to show you that, uh, you know, she's going to have her ingredients look like this, but she wanted to be able to get her, in, her um, the, the directions for the recipe to fit to the shape of the lemon. And you'll see that she's worked on it manually here. And this can be a very tedious process. She did a really great job, but and based on my own experience, I know that this, is, this takes a long time to do it. You basically have to type each row of text. Um, you can do the kerning to get the spacing right, but sometimes you go, oh, I need to use less, you know, I need to use a, a one fewer word here, or I need to, you know, add a few words or whatever. And it can become very tedious getting it to work. So she asked me if there was an easier way to do it, if you could just type out the text and have it automatically fit to the shape. And the answer is, yes, you can. However, you have to use an alternative program called Inkscape. And Inkscape is a free program, it's a free vector program that you can download from Inkscape.org, and that's what I'm going to be using in this video to make it work. Okay, the first thing, um, you'll notice down here how her words go right up to the edges of her object, um, of the shape. And I don't think that's a good idea. One is I think it looks a little better when they're a little bit away from the edges of the shape. So I'm going to uh, be doing that. But the other reason is also if you're going to be doing a print and cut, you need to give yourself just a little room for error. So that's another reason to go ahead and make it just uh, to, to move those letters away just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, this is the one I'm going to be working with. This is the text she had typed out some more of her instructions for her recipe. And then this is the, uh, this is the, the shape she wants it to fit to. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to make a copy of this. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then just drag this from the middle over to make a copy of the object. And I'm not going, I'm, I really don't want to worry about these little interior paths here. So for the, for the sake of doing this, I'm, I'm going to just, uh, let's recolor it. I'm going to go to Arrange Break Path. And then I'm going to get rid of these little interior pieces. And this is the shape I'm actually going to work with. Now, again, I want it, the words to be a little further away from the edges. So I'm going to create an inline of this shape. And I'm going to use that inline as the basis for what I want the words to, uh, to, to fit to. So I'm going to go to Transform Outline. Make sure Outline is not checked. Make sure Inline is checked. Let's pick another color. Let's just pick a bright color red for the inline. And then I'm just going to start increasing this. And I can see, let's take it up to, oh, to about 0.12. And that's going to be the, uh, the distance away, 1.12 of an inch away from the outside edge that my lettering will be. Um, and then I don't, no longer really need the original, so I'm just going to uncheck this or unindent it, outdent it, and then click on close. And now then this is the new outline that the letters will be conforming to. Now then, I need to get this into Inkscape, but I don't want to send all of this to Inkscape. I just want to send just this shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. Then I'm going to go to another instance of Click and Cut Studio, and I'm going to do an Edit, Paste. Then I'm just going to left click. When you see this little um, icon look like this, you just left click once and it brings your shape right into, uh, into the software. Okay? So now then this is the file I'm going to save. However, before you save to Inkscape, it's a good idea to flip the image. Now you may forget, but, uh, but it's really good before you leave Click and Cut Studio or ACS Studio to flip it. And all you have to do is just come up to this icon right here and just click on it once and it flips the image. Now if you forget to do that, then you can do the same thing under Layout, size move and mirror and then pick vertical mirror and then it'll do the same thing okay so now we're ready to save it so I'm going to go to file export and I'm going to pick scalable vector graphics from the drop down menu give it a name I'm going to call it lemon I already have one that I did before I'm going to call this one lemon 2 and then click on export And it normally doesn't take this long. That's just my slow computer. Okay. Now then, in Inkscape, before you bring in your lemon file, you need to get your, your text set to whatever font you want to use. To do that, click on this T icon in Inkscape, and then set locate your font, 
pick a size, pick let's say 48, make it nice and big to work with. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be preset to anything other than, than in later on when I'm doing the typing, I'll, I'll explain why you need to make sure it's, it's, you know, it's large enough. But go ahead and make it something like 48, nice and big, even larger if you want to. Then under layout, indent this last one here under justify lines, be sure this one is selected. Put your line spacing at say 100%. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and just change this. Uh, let's go ahead and make it, I'll bring it up to say, I'll bring it down to 40 just so I can get this to pop up. Then click on Save as Default. Then once you save as default and click on Close, now then that's your new default. However, check it. Go over to your text tools, select this, make sure it comes up and it says what it is. Make sure your font comes up in the size. If it doesn't, if it defaults to a different font, then you need to close the software and reopen it. In fact, you may need to come back into this text window, make a change, like come back to say 48, click on Save as Default again, click on Close, Close Inkscape, and reopen it. Sometimes it doesn't take the new default, and if it, and there's really no other way to get around that. So be sure and, and, and do that as necessary. Again, just click on the T icon, make whatever change you need, and then click on Save as Default and Close and Reopen. Okay, so now then let's, once you get the text, once you get working where yes, if you click on this and you see your default script, then you're good to go. So now then go under File, Open, locate the file that you were working with, my Lemon 2 here, and click on Open. And you'll see it comes in. And now then before you do anything, verify back in your original file, does it, do you have the same orientation? You know, did it, did it get, you know, turn the right direction? Because you need it the, the right direction before you start doing it. If it's not, then you can flip it here too. You can go under object and right here, flip vertical. So you can still do it in this software also. Now then the next thing I want to do is zoom in nice and close. Down here is the zoom tool. So I'm just going to increase this until I can zoom right in on my object. just like so. Now that I'm ready to start typing. So to start typing, again, I make sure nothing's selected. Come over to this uh, icon, the text icon. Then just click once and then we're going to start typing. And this is going to, this is a long, uh, the instructions are kind of long for me to be sitting here typing out for you watching. So I'm going to be, I'm going to type a little bit and I'm going to stop the video and then come back. So preheat oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Cut and 18 inch and now at this point well I can get long now at this point you know you can just it doesn't matter where you you know I can go ahead and hit the enter key and keep typing you know it can be as short or as long as you want because again the text is going to automatically adjust to this to the shape of it so long and then I just keep typing again piece of parchment don't have it spelt right. See, this is the reason why I'm going to have to stop the video because otherwise you have to sit here and watch me, you know, make all of my my uh, corrections. Press into bottom, and okay. So I'm going to keep going. Like I said, I'm going to stop the video and then I'll resume after I get uh, the rest of it typed or most of the rest of it typed. Okay, so now I've finished typing out the uh, the script. And so what you want to do is uh, you want to very carefully look it over. You know, be sure and do all of your proofreading uh, right now. Um, have a look at it. I noticed right up here in the top row that um, I had, and I need to go back into the text mode, that um, I have, instead of cut and 18 inch, I had a D, so I need to correct that. And then look through and see if there's anything else. You know, make sure that everything looks okay. Now then, once you're sure that it's all correctly typed, and one thing to note is that you want to make sure, you'll notice how this is obviously much bigger than this and that's good you want the text to be much longer and bigger than the shape because you're going to be able to adjust it if you go the other direction if you start with it smaller it doesn't work at least I've had problems I haven't figured out a way to get it to work if my text isn't already longer than my shape okay so now then so in case you type it and it looks like it's not then just decrease the size of your shape you can just come over here and pick your you know click on the arrow key pick your shape and then resize it so it's smaller than the text okay Obviously, in this case, I can make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so now then, marquee select, so both are selected. Both, you'll see that both the, uh, the shape and the text are selected. Go under text, flow into frame. Okay, now then, again, as I mentioned before, I knew that the text was going to be, you know, more than the frame. That's fine. Click away, select my, the frame, or, you know, the frame or the shape, and then just start making it bigger. As you make it bigger, it's going to fill in more of that text. 
Okay, now that I've made it too big, because obviously I have all this empty space, so now I need to just start backing off a little bit. And you can just back off little increments at a time until you get it just the way you want it to look. And that's getting very, very close. That's pretty close right there. And of course, if you go too too far down, then you'll start to be missing words again. So you need to bring it up just a little bit. Okay, I think I kind of like that. I like the cool completely, you know, kind of in its own line, just like that. Okay, and then at the top, I've got the one and then starts the preheat. Okay, so once I'm happy with the way it looks, then I click away. I click just on the outside path and I delete it. So now that I'm left with just the words. Next step, go to File, Save As. From the drop down menu here, you're going to pick Encapsulated Postscript EPS. Pick that for the file type. Pick um, a file name. I've been doing this several times just to get it down perfect. So I'm going to say, let's make it Lemon 3 this time. Click on Save. This little box will come up, and you want to have these first two checked. You want the bounding box around the full page and the convert text to paths. Now, I've been able before to not check this one and just bring it back in in text, and it worked. But in other cases, I do it, and it doesn't work. So just to be safe, I always say get all your, you know, the corrections, the text corrected in Inkscape, or just leave this in Inkscape. You can always just save this file and come back and edit it if you need to. But go ahead and, uh, you know, check these two boxes and then click on OK. Okay, now then come back to Click and Cut Studio. This is back to our original file. And now then we're going to go to File, Import. Make sure Merge is checked. This one doesn't really matter, just make sure you have Merge. I'm going to pick on my Lemon 3, click on Import. This little um, icon will pop up. I'm going to left click one time. I'm going to select the top Use PDF Import Filter. I only have one page. This is fine. I don't. I just can go ahead and just click on OK. And there's my text. Now then, the next thing you need to do is get the text to fit inside um, the lemon, which is just a matter of resizing it because it was, you know, created based on this particular, you know, shape. And so now then, you can just um, bring this down here and. Um, make sure you get it where it looks like it's just filling the shape just to those edges. And remember it's going to come close to the edges here but not to the edges on the other one. So that looks good so we can just hit delete on that and then let's move this text out of the way and bring our text here up to the shape. Zoom in and then we might need to use the arrow keys just to tweak it down into place something like that and now then turn on fill and there you have it now you have your your text that fits the shape of your uh you know, the shape that you're working with